Hey Eagles fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Eagles Now. And before we get going, be sure to subscribe to Eagles Now right now as we're approaching 7,000 subs here on the Eagles Now channel. Listen, we're trying to get 100 subs here on this video alone. All we need is 100 of you guys who have not subscribed yet to go ahead and subscribe. That way we reach 7,000 subs here on what I think is the best Eagles channel on YouTube. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I wanted to go ahead and take a look at wide receivers in this NFL draft. Now, not just first-round wide receivers. We've done that here on the channel. I want to look at second-round wide receivers. We know Philadelphia is the 53rd overall pick in the 2020 NFL draft, meaning that's their second-round draft pick. And there's a very real possibility they go wide receiver at number 21 and wide receiver at number 53, or they go some other position at 21, make all the Eagle fans upset, and then come back and go wide receiver in the second round. So here are four players I think would be the best fit for the Eagles at number 53 overall, all depending on who is there. You know, drafts are weird in terms of where players are selected. Let's start with a guy from the state of Pennsylvania, played at Penn State, and apparently the Eagles have been very high on their radar. It's KJ Hamler from Penn State. He seems to be a favorite because he not only met with them in person before the whole, you know, stay-at-home stuff was going on, but he's also met with them multiple times on FaceTime as well. This seems to be, out of the four, the favorite of the Eagles. Now, he's not my favorite, but the favorite out of the Eagles in terms of a second-round draft pick. Slightly undersized more of a slot guy, 5'9", 180 pounds. He was an explosive playmaker, though, that can get the football when he gets it in his hands, can take it all the way to the house. Feels like a mini Deshaun Jackson in a way. The question's going to be, do, do the Eagles need size or do they need speed? We know a lot of people want them to go ahead and get speed, but would size be a good idea for the Eagles? We'll talk about that here in one second. He was great last year in terms of his production. 56 catches, 904 yards, 16.1 yards per catch up there at Penn State. Eight touchdowns. A very, very good player. Some compare him to Tavon Austin before Tavon Austin got old and turned out to not be that great during his final stint with the Dallas Cowboys. Here's what the NFL.com had to say about Hamler in terms of his overall explosiveness. Quote, explosive slot target who hits the scales as a lightweight but could have heavyweight impact on game. Hamler's blazing speed is used solo uh, is used solo and in route combinations to stress secondaries and create big plays. He's had an alarming number of drops in 2019, and the routes are ragged, but as his athleticism and separation burst are on all th on all three levels helps mitigate those concerns. I love what a lot of you guys are saying right now. Whoa, Thomas. Drops have been a problem of the Eagles. Look at Nelson Aguilar, uh, Aguilar last year. Alshon Jeffries had drops. That, to me, was a little concerning, you know, for covering the Eagles. It's like, hey, we don't want a guy who drops a lot of passes, but the explosive player ability, the big play ability, is obviously something very, very important for the Eagles. The question is going to be, and you'll see here on this list, a lot of the second-round draft guys are bigger, whereas a lot of the first-round draft guys are not the 6'4", you know, 240. We'll talk about that in a second. But the Eagles, there's a very legitimate question. If Alshon Jeffrey leaves, do you need another small guy or do you need another big guy? Look at the height di uh, disparity right now in Philadelphia. Deshaun Jackson, 5'10". J.J. Ortega Whiteside is your biggest starting receiver at 6'2". Greg Ward's only 5'11". Shelton Gibson, I guess, is your fourth receiver right now. He's 5'11 as well. So I guess the knock on Hamler is going to be, if you lose Alshon Jeffrey, is Ortega Whiteside going to be your, your, your jump ball, your possession receiver? Is that it? Do you rely on Ertz and Goddard to do that like they did this past season? I don't think his height is going to knock him out of contention for a second round draft pick from Philadelphia because they do love him. But the explosive plays alone, will that be enough to go ahead and appease Doug Peterson and Howie Roseman? I think yes. We'll have to see what uh, Eagle fans and also the Eagle front office thinks about him as well. Question for you guys here. Should the Eagles take a wide receiver in both the first and second round? Quick, quick ad break here on YouTube. Scroll down. This will be pinned in the pinned comment section. Go ahead and type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for yes. For, for no. I would type yes right here because I think they should take a wide receiver in the first and second round, but I'm curious what you guys think. All right, moving on. Another player they go ahead and take who will definitely be there in the second round is USC's Michael Pittman Jr., who is the complete opposite of Hamler in terms of size and productivity, or I should say size and catch radius catching ability, but could offer a different in terms of wide receiver for the future of Philadelphia. Great size. We talked about that. Six foot four, but does lack that speed. About the five or the four five, kind of late four fives in terms of his 40 time at the NFL Combine. 
great hands, and is a solid route runner. That's something we see less of in the National Football League these days. The Jerry Judys of the world run great routes. That's why they go so early. But a lot of these other Big 12 kind of spread option, uh, or, or I should say spread them out, spread wide receiver concepts that a lot of these uh, college places play at don't really teach them wide receiver route combinations. So the fact that Michael Pittman knows this stuff is very, very good. He's never really had a great quarterback during his time at USC. And of course, a lot of the USC quarterbacks have been injured during his time playing there and yet still has been very, very productive. Here's what the NFL.com's draft profile said about Pittman. Quote, big, smart, and reliable. Pittman falls into the possession receiver bin, but has top-notch ball skills that allow him to bully and best cornerbacks down the field. Improving release quickness against the press will be an early focal point in an NFL camp, but his frame and physicality should create workspace underneath even with close coverages. The player comp that I'm reading about in terms of uh, in terms of uh, Michael Pittman has got to be Cortland Sutton, Cortland Sutton of the Denver Broncos out of SMU. Last year, Sutton, who's a very similar in terms of size and speed, 72 catches, 1,000 yards, 6 touchdowns, 15.4 yards per catch. So Cortland Sutton, a guy I covered, I followed at SMU. I saw him play in person. He is incredible down the field despite his lack of speed. And if Mike, if, I, if, if Michael Pittman turns out to be similar to Cortland Sutton, as a lot of people are comparing him to, this is a guy who will dominate in the National Football League. I would rather have him over KJ Hamler, but that's just me. I think size is a little bit underrated in the National Football League because you see the Tyreek Hills, the Deshaun Jackson of the world get underneath and still break it deep. But I think if you have a deep play, a deep, a deep play, excuse me, deep play, big threat guy like a Mark, a, a, a Michael Pittman or a Cortland Sutton, you can really show you can go, go ahead and stretch the field and create a lot of trouble for opposing cornerbacks. Before we keep going, mentioned it earlier on in the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, 100 of you guys have subscribed already. We're trying to get to 7,000 subs here on Philadelphia Eagles now, and hopefully we get that with this video. Again, only 100 of you guys. We know a lot of you guys who are subscribed do not click the notification bell, so be sure to click that as well, the way you're notified whenever we jump on here for new videos. I think we're gonna have a new video tomorrow and probably a mailbag video later on as well. So stay tuned for that. Another player you're not hearing a lot of, but will be a second round draft pick is Brandon Ayuk out of Arizona State. Again, immediate big play threat. We know Philadelphia needs that. He is also versatile, has good play, has good return skills as well, can do kick coverage and punt return. The problem that he has and why he's going to fall despite the massive stats, which we'll show you here in just a second, is that he was Juco his first two years. He had a really rough junior year and really only came into his own his senior year. Now, of course, you know, you could say, well, he's just finding himself. He's growing up. He's a young man, blah, blah, blah. That's one argument. The other argument is, why did it take three years to be productive? Will he kind of, do you take that same uh, time frame to be productive in the National Football League? Either way, we know his versatility, not just his size and playmaking ability, but his versatility could be huge for Philadelphia because Boston Scott is really your only kick returner right now. And I think they'd like to mix in another multi-role wide receiver. Uh, Boston Scott's a running back but a multi-role wide receiver to go ahead and help out with kick coverage, or I should say kick return and punt return. Here's the NFL.com on Ayuk again. This is what they say about him. Quote, ascending receiving prospect who has shown continued improvement since coming from the Juco ranks. Ayuk, uh, Ayuk has size, speed, and is a natural pass catcher who plays with good energy, but he moves, must improve physicality to handle contested catches. Now, you ask Thomas, who is his player comp? His player comp is Robert Woods of the LA Rams. Woods last year, 90 catches, 1,100 yards, only two touchdowns, but 12.6 yards per catch in the Jared Goff, Goff Sean McVay offense. Robert Woods is a guy people have said the Eagles should trade for, even though they're not going to go ahead and do that, but why not go ahead and get Brandon Ayuk, who is similar to Robert Woods. Robert Woods is not a surefire, oh my goodness, some of the best receivers in the league. You gotta put Robert Woods in that category. No, but still, if, if Brandon Ayuk eventually has 90 catches and 1,100 yards in his Philadelphia Eagles career, that is a win for Philadelphia, paired with Greg Ward and obviously paired with Deshaun Jackson as well, and maybe a first-round wide receiver in Justin Jefferson or Henry Ruggs. I think this is another player, again, in the second round at number 53 overall, probably will be there. He will be overlooked because a lot of us do not know his name. You draft him, you're saying, wait, who is this guy? He's a very, very good player. Put the film on. Go to YouTube. Look up Ayuk. He could be a big, dominant receiver for Philadelphia on the outside. Have you guys picked one? Who'd you rather have? Have I convinced you of Pittman or Ayuk? Type P down below for Pittman. Type A down below for Ayuk. Honestly, I mean, either one makes sense. I would rather have Pittman for the continued productivity. Ayuk, the Juco in the junior year are a little bit concerning. If I had to pick one, I would take Pittman. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. The final player here, again, I'm telling you, 
a lot of the smaller, more speedy guys are going to go early or are going to go in the first round or earlier in the second round. Jalen Rager is not on this list because Rager, most likely at a TCU, is not going to be there at number 53. So the guys that you have in terms of the options in the second round are going to be the bigger guys. And the final one here is no different. He's probably the biggest one. Chase Claypool out of Notre Dame. A lot of Eagle fans have been calling to go ahead and get him in the second round. Six foot four, 240 pounds, but plays primarily in the slot, creating crazy mismatches against smaller slots cornerbacks not only in college and the National Football League as well his stock is rising though and I say a lot of players won't be there at 53 Ayuk will be there at 53. Pittman probably there at 53. I'm not sure Claypool is going to get there because the stock is rising, but if he is, he will probably be the pick over the last three guys we have talked about. He might be the steal of the entire second round. Listen to what the NFL.com had to say about Claypool. Quote, the comparison to former teammate Miles Boykin is an easy one since both have elite size and explosiveness, but Claypool has a higher ceiling and is a little bit more pro-ready. Claypool doesn't have shake to get much separation underneath, but he's physical inside the route. Uh, he's physical inside the route and is uh, adept at making contested catches when needed. Now you heard the player comp there. We've been giving you guys player comps for each of these four players. They said Miles Boykin. You're saying Thomas, who is Miles Boykin? He played at Notre, at Notre Dame. Where did he play in the NFL last year? Drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in the mid round last season. Didn't play much. Was starting at, or was, I guess saw the field in almost every single game this year, but only had 14 catches, 198 yards, and three touchdowns. Now, you compare that to Claypool's final year at Notre Dame this past season. He had 66 catches, 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns, and 5.7 yards per catch. That's with Ian Book throwing him the football. I know Lamar Jackson, again, not as big of a thrower in terms of, you know, the Carson Wentz's of the world, who we could see Claypool go ahead and join up with, but I wanted to show the player comparison of Miles Boykin because it is an accurate overall physical trait comparison, and it probably shows what we would expect from a rookie wide receiver in the second round, kind of that 200 yard, three touchdowns, hopefully more, but Boykin obviously did not get the ball a lot last year. They drafted Hollywood Brown earlier in the NFL draft, but that's a good player comp for Chase Claypool overall. The question for you guys here though, which of the four wide receivers out of these four would you have the Philadelphia Eagles draft if you were the GM? Would you want to go ahead and get Claypool? Would you want Ayuk? Would you obviously want someone like a, like a Michael Pittman or a KJ Hamler? I'm curious what you guys think in terms of these wide receivers. I think Philadelphia is very high on Hamler. I think that's kind of me probably their guy there at 53 if they don't get a wide receiver in the first round. Maybe if they do get a wide receiver in the first round, but I want to break down the names that you'll hear on day two that you might not be like fully invested in because we're all focused on Lamb and Judy and Ruggs and Jefferson. But now, after watching this video, we get to the second round. As these guys start to go, you go, oh, Thomas talked about him. Oh, yeah, Thomas talked about him. The way you're notified and ready to go for the NFL draft. That's our goal here at Philadelphia Eagles now. That way you are notified on the latest news, rumors, and also stuff like this where we break down some draft prospects that Philadelphia could go ahead and take. All time we have for today, for Philadelphia's Now, I'm Thomas Mott, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.